Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and the Lego Icons Dune Ornithopter is phenomenal. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at this incredible Lego set that honestly, I never thought that Lego would ever do in a million years. So much so that literally when the first movie came out, I recreated a mock version of the Ornithopter because I was like, there's no way that Lego would actually give us an official Dune set. And yet, here it is. However, there are a couple of things that I feel like could be changed and improved with the model itself, so of course stay tuned to the end of the video where I suggest one very quick and easy improvement to the set that I feel will make it a lot better, and it's a very, very simple change, so hopefully this helps some other people out in terms of just improving the look and feel of this incredible model that is packed full of functionality that has so many different things that you can do with it. What a cool LEGO model. I absolutely love that we actually got something like this as a LEGO set and let's jump into it right now. So this is set number 10327, the Dune Atreides Royal Ornithopter. It retails for 165 US dollars, came with a ton of minifigures that we'll look at at the end of this review, and really just features the Ornithopter in Lego form, something I never thought I would be saying. Now this is a beautiful model. It's also pretty controversial. The model itself has definitely had a lot of criticism for featuring a very technic heavy and exposed exterior, utilizing random colors here and there to make the building process easier, but has equally been praised for the incredible amount of functionality packed into the model itself and by just how much you can do with the model. I'm going to start off by just taking a look at how this plays because there's actually quite a lot of things that you can do with the build. Not only can you actually flip the wings out like so, but there's also a feature to retract the landing gear at the same time, which you can see right here, which is just so, so smooth in the way that everything functions together. There's a function to flap the wings, as I kind of showcased in the intro of the video. You just kind of press down on this button here and the wings will flap, and you can actually have it be diving in flight, having the wings fold upwards and then outwards again while they're flapping in flight if you wanted to have it go into a dive. All in all, this is absolutely feature rich and it plays like a Technic set disguised as a system set, which is both good and bad. I love Lego Technic. In fact, some of my favorite themes are Lego Technic based, but I will also say that when people do get a large Lego Icons system based set, people tend to prefer to put these on display rather than actually having a functional toy. What the designer Mike Siaki has actually pulled off here is making something that does look pretty good on display, but also is a very well functioning toy that you can actually do so much more with than I initially imagined. Now I was showcased this set early back in September for LEGO Fan Media Days in Billund, Denmark, and even when handling it during those interviews, I did not even realize just how much this set has going for it. Let's take a closer look at the inside of the cockpit first as we zoom in on the details of the set itself. The cockpit does open up like so, which isn't actually really that movie accurate, but it is nice that you actually have a chance to put your minifigures on the inside. This piece is actually brand new. It somewhat resembles an older style of cockpit that we got all the way back in 2002 for LEGO Star Wars, but it's a lot more angular, and when speaking to the designer, he actually said that this was a direct reference to that older LEGO cockpit piece, which is no longer in production, but they still wanted to pay homage to that bubbles type aesthetic while actually having it be an angular design. The interior section can be removed, which is intentional, allowing you to easily place the minifigures in the seats and then actually put them into the cockpit itself, which is pretty nice. There are individual flight controls that you can control one at a time right here. And then the entire cockpit just folds downwards and that's the way that this functions. You may notice that they're using the slightly newer style of transparent black coloration for all of the windscreen components in the set itself. This is actually a brand new color that was just introduced last year that replaces the older trans dark brown that they were using for trans black pretty much throughout the entirety of LEGO's history. This time they've actually completely revamped the way the windscreens look and the coloration of the model Model itself, so you actually have a much more realistic look and feel compared to the movie. Unfortunately, this does mean that in transport, the windscreens can get scratched up a little bit. They did try to prevent this by putting some of the windscreen elements in their own different baggies, and I actually got pretty lucky that there are not that many scratches on my version of the windscreen, but I've seen a lot of folks online do complain about the scratches on the windscreens themselves, which is more of a byproduct of LEGO actually changing the type of plastic they use for transparent pieces to be more environmentally friendly. 
Now moving on to the side of the model, it's clear that this is a fully functioning technical marvel of engineering, aesthetics, and design. While, to be fair, aesthetics have suffered a little bit due to the mechanisms inside the actual inner workings of the vehicle itself, there are a lot of exposed LEGO Technic pieces, and this is made all the more clear when you actually unfurl the wings here, and you can see just so many different bits and pieces of exposed blue pins, Technic holes, Technic holes here and there, red different kind of attachment points, but really the reason why they did this is to actually make the build something that is easy for even beginner LEGO fans to accomplish. Sure this is an 18 plus set, but a lot of people are going to be buying this LEGO set who are fans of Dune, and this could be somebody's first LEGO set, and because of that, they really wanted to highlight making the build as easy as possible and as simple to follow. Unfortunately, that does come with a lot of setbacks and a lot of trade-offs because you have so many different colorations of elements where the black versions of the elements do exist today. Obviously, this Technic pin to Mixel ball joint connector here is a piece that originated in black, but nowadays they've just kind of done a mix of black and red depending on what set they put them in. In fact, the red Technic axles here actually do come in the set in black. Here you can see they are featured in black, so they literally were part of the same set in the color that they're supposed to be. So it's very clear that LEGO just decided to make these differently colored to make it easier to follow. Even these light gray Technic joints here do come in black as well. So there is a possibility to upgrade this with one easy trick, and that is just simply taking away pretty much all of the different colored pieces in this inner construction of the model and making it one single color for black for the connections here, which is something I'm kind of tempted to showcase later on in the review if people are interested. Now, moving onwards to the rest of the model itself, the landing gear is also pretty Technic heavy, but I feel like it definitely does add to the aesthetic here, whereas some of the Technic exposed pieces do take away from the model, like the holes here, holes here, and the holes on the side of the model right there. I definitely feel like the landing gear and the back ramp actually being pretty Technic heavy is something that has added to the aesthetic. It feels more greebly, it feels more mechanical in its design, and when you zoom out and actually can see these fully functioning, it has a really cool function to have these snap outwards and together, which is not something that I've really seen in any other LEGO set before to have a mechanism this complex work this smoothly. It is so, so solid the way that they actually made this work. And I do like the attempt to actually add in some greebles here and there with some bars and linkages and even telephone pieces being used for just some extra details along the sides. Now, when I was putting this together, I was initially rather confused as to how the function worked. It seemed that pushing down this button led to a very minimal wiggle in terms of how the wings actually moved, but obviously that was very intentional because there's a lot of wiggle room, literally speaking, in the way the design works, where you actually have each and every one of the long propeller blades moving back and forth, even with just a very slight movement. You can very clearly see that this is fluttering in the way that they do in the movie. And speaking of the propeller blades themselves, these are brand new elements introduced for this set. They were made specifically for this particular set, and I find it unlikely that we'll see them used in any other set because they are very specific. LEGO Technic does have a large-scale helicopter blade element, which has been used in Dune Ornithopter mocks in the past. In fact, I've literally reviewed one of those mocks on my channel before, before I even realized that LEGO would ever consider making this an official product, but these are very well sculpted to actually match what they look like in the film and are so specific that I find it hard to believe that LEGO will ever reuse those elements again. Moving onwards to the back of the model, again, there are some random colors here and there to make the construction easier. Bionicle fans are very used to this by now, the blue pins and red axles sticking out on pretty much every single build other than builds that are themed around those colors, and I definitely feel like maybe they didn't necessarily need to use yellow here, but it is what it is, and again, it is LEGO, so you do have the option to swap out the colors if you are that kind of collector who wants to display this without any of these other random colors showing. For me, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It is a little bit annoying seeing the red in such high abundance for the mechanism here, and I feel like the aesthetics of the model would be visually improved a lot more if they just removed the red. But I also understand that LEGO is making products that appeal to everybody. They're not just appealing to the diehard LEGO collectors, and for folks who just get this as their first LEGO set or their second LEGO set, 
it can be very complicated following the instructions if it was all black. I mean, it was already pretty difficult actually making sure that everything was linked up properly in this very complicated technic mechanism to let the wings flutter. I can only imagine how much harder it would be for a new LEGO builder who hasn't had a lot of experience building LEGO Technic or even just building LEGO in general, having to put this together without all of these colors intermixed in the build to make it easier to work with. Still, that being said, that's why I definitely feel like this is a really fun, it is beautifully designed, but flawed model, and it is actually intentionally flawed. These colored pieces did not need to be in there, but they are in there to make the build easier, and they do actually follow LEGO's current guidelines for how they produce sets, and it's just kind of how things work with LEGO sets nowadays. Sure, back in the day, if this set were to come out in like 2005 or 2006, I'm sure they would have used only black parts for the assemblies there, but I also am sure that LEGO would never have done a set like this back then because building techniques have become just so much more refined and so much more interesting and intricate over the years. In fact, it's not something that's apparently obvious, but the cockpit is one of the most intricately designed pieces of the entire model. To accomplish these sat at different angles, it is a feat of engineering just to make each of the windscreen elements just fully close up, have pretty much no air gaps in the way that they're set. It is truly an engineering marvel, and I am constantly impressed by how much I learned as a builder when putting this together. It really is a work of art and a work of engineering. Of course, Mike Siaki has designed so many of the other iconic LEGO sets from most of the LEGO creator and now LEGO icons supercars, as well as a lot of the large-scale sculptures. This is another absolutely fantastic masterpiece of a model that for diehard LEGO fans might let some down in terms of the coloration and the pieces used, but for the general audience is something that absolutely works very well as both a play model and a display model, which is not something that a lot of LEGO models can boast because usually they're one or the other. That's pretty much all I have to say for this part of the review, but now I think it's time to talk about the minifigures because that was another major highlight of the set. This should come as absolutely no surprise to anybody, but the minifigures in the set are absolutely phenomenal. So many other reviewers and pictorial reviewers have already showcased images and HD of these figures online, but I just want to kind of add my own two cents to what I think about the figures. I just love how each of the different individual characteristics from the skin tones to the hair pieces to the very intricately detailed suits have been captured in minifigure form, and I'm really happy they actually managed to include Baron Harkonnen in the set. Even though it doesn't really necessarily make sense to have him in the set itself if they're trying to depict a particular scene from the movies, I think it's really cool that they do feature one of the main villains of the movies themselves because I don't know when or if we're ever going to get another LEGO Dune set, and this lineup would absolutely feel missing without one of the main villain characters. Now, the still suits look really good. I love the gunmetal gray and detail on the masks themselves, as well as the suits, and even the armor elements used for some of the other characters are really great, reusing some of the pieces that we've seen from LEGO Star Wars with the Bad Batch and Dark Troopers, but adding its own flair to it. Lady Jessica looks phenomenal in pearl gold with special gold lace around the eyes itself, and I just love how each of them have very distinct and striking features. Lego absolutely killed it with the minifigures this time. So just as a fun exercise, I broke out my LEGO Technic sorted pieces and tried to remove all of the multicolored pieces that I could easily remove. It wasn't everything, but I definitely do feel like it did do a lot in terms of making this feel aesthetically more complete and more finalized as a build, and it really does take away from the whole kind of multicolored Technic aspect that was one of the problems with the initial model. Obviously, I couldn't get everything. There are some pieces in different colors that are so deeply embedded in there that it would basically take fully disassembling the entire model to take them out, but I did the best I could given the exposed pieces, and just the removal of the red Mixel Ball Joint Technic pin connectors absolutely helped a ton because now it feels like this is one kind of cohesive mechanical build. The only thing I wish I could have also taken out were these blue Technic pins, which for one, LEGO doesn't produce black long length Technic pins anymore, the 3L length ones, so if you do want to take them out, you do probably have to resort to BrickLink or your own parts collection to get these particular pieces in black, but secondly, disassembling this section would have been nearly impossible without taking everything apart, so I left those in, I really just tried to go for what was relatively easy to remove, and this was pretty much the final result. A lot of these came from the wings, one of the green pieces there in line was for the cockpit, but for the most part, again, 
I feel like that definitely drastically improved the look and feel of the model itself, and I can only imagine what it actually would look like with every single multicolored piece removed. Now I've seen some builders online actually go this far and take out basically everything, and if you were to do that, I would highly recommend you do it before you actually start building the set. Just make it part of the building process, have your tray of parts next to you as you're putting together the set, because after the fact, it was rather difficult even making these particular swaps, and I don't think I could have swapped out any of the other pieces. One final thing I do want to note that not a lot of people know about is that LEGO actually just reintroduced or actually introduced for the first time a LEGO Technic pin to axle connector in gunmetal gray. It is frictionless because it was used on the wheels of last year's Batmobile from the Batcave set, but you can get those parts off pick a brick, so that absolutely helps with removing the tan elements, like these tan elements right here, which are used a ton in the mechanism. So just a heads up, this now comes in gunmetal gray, which I haven't seen a lot of people talking about, but is one of my absolute favorite recolors of the past year. That's pretty much all I have to say for this review and now it's time to wrap this up and hang this from my ceiling. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at the LEGO Dune Ornithopter, an absolute beast of a model. I cannot wait to have it hanging from my ceiling alongside the custom mock version, which I actually put out a review of years ago on my channel, because again, I literally never thought that LEGO would ever be touching the subject material, but I'm very happy to be proven wrong. This is a phenomenal set. You can do so much with it, swoosh it around, have the wings flap, actually have the back landing gear deploy. It's so much fun. And and it is absolutely packed full of functionality, and hopefully my suggestions on how to make it look just a little bit better were helpful for you to improve the look and feel of the model itself. That's all for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.